Without the help of modern technology, it is almost impossible for astronomers to directly peek back into the universe's origin. Most of the knowledge resulting from the Big Bang is based on mathematical calculations and models. The Big Bang theory is the most widely accepted theory for how the universe came to be. Defined, it states that the universe as we know it began with an unimaginably hot and dense single point that expanded and stretched at first at inconceivable rates, then at a more measured pace over the following 13.7 billion years to become the still expanding cosmos we see today. However, since the launch of NASA's James Webb Telescope, scientists have gotten more precise and detailed pictures of the cosmos. From the interpretation of these images, the JWST is on a mission to debunk all modern universe theories, including the Big Bang Theory. Two assumptions underpin the Big Bang Theory. The first is that Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity accurately explains all matter's gravitational interaction. The second assumption, the cosmological principle, argues that an observer's vision of the cosmos is independent of the direction he looks and his position. This concept only applies to the universe's large-scale features, but it does indicate that the cosmos has no edge, implying that the Big Bang beginning happened not at a specific spot in space, but instead across space at the exact moment. These two assumptions allow us to compute the history of the universe after a particular epoch known as the Planck period. Scientists have yet to discover what existed before Planck's time. While most astronomers accept the Big Bang theory, some theorists propose alternate explanations, such as eternal inflation or an oscillating universe, in addition to the Big Bang. Everything in the universe was condensed into an infinitesimally tiny singularity, a point of infinite density and heat some 13.7 billion years ago. They believe that an enormous expansion occurred, rapidly expanding our cosmos beyond the speed of light. According to physicist Alan Guth's 1980 hypothesis, which transformed the way we think about the Big Bang forever, a phase of cosmic inflation lasted just fractions of a second, around 10 to minus 32 of a second. When cosmic expansion abruptly and mysteriously ended, the more traditional Big Bang theories gained root. A torrent of matter and radiation known as reheating started filling our universe with particles, atoms, matter, and the things that would form stars and galaxies. According to NASA, this all occurred inside the first second after the universe started, when the temperature of everything was still incredibly high, at about 10 billion degrees Fahrenheit. The universe now included fundamental particles including neutrons, electrons, and protons, and raw ingredients forming everything we know today. Because it couldn't contain visible light, this early soup would have been difficult to perceive. The free electrons would have caused light to scatter like sunlight scatters from water droplets in clouds. However, these free electrons collided with nuclei over time, resulting in neutral atoms or atoms with equal positive and negative electric charges. Around 380,000 years after the Big Bang, the light eventually shone through. This light is more appropriately known as the cosmic microwave background. It's often called the afterglow of the Big Bang. It was predicted by Ralph Alpha and other scientists in 1948, but it was discovered by chance approximately 20 years later. The Big Bang hypothesis has been repeatedly disputed since its inception. These issues have prompted those seeking more specific proof to establish their point. Many have attempted to proceed farther from where this chapter ends, and various discoveries have been uncovered that offer a fuller picture of the universe's birth. NASA discovered some astonishing findings that provide support for the Big Bang idea. Most notably, scientists using the Astro 2 Observatory validated one of the conditions for the Big Bang as the basis of the cosmos. Scientists discovered primordial helium, such as deuterium, in the remote reaches of the cosmos in June 1995. These results are compatible with a crucial part of the Big Bang hypothesis, which states that a combination of hydrogen and helium was generated at the beginning of the universe. Furthermore, the Hubble telescope, named after the creator of the Big Bang hypothesis, has revealed some details about the components that existed after creation. Using Hubble, astronomers discovered the element boron in ancient stars. They hypothesized that its existence is either a residue of intense events during the creation of galaxies, or that it's considerably older, 
dating back to the Big Bang. If the latter is correct, scientists will be obliged to revise their hypothesis for the origin of the universe and subsequent events since such a massive and complicated atom would not have existed according to current theory. The James Webb Space Telescope's initial images of faraway galaxies made astronomers ponder. Star systems before the cosmos were even a billion years old seem more prominent and complicated than previously thought. On this note, an article claiming that the new telescope disproved the notion that the universe was created 13.7 billion years ago due to the Big Bang started to circulate online. It all began with an essay published in Nature, in which astronomer Alison Kirkpatrick discussed the contradictions between observations and theory and used the following phrase, Right now I find myself lying awake every morning wondering if everything I've ever done is wrong. The essay, which is still being circulated on the internet, alludes to this comment as support of the idea that the Big Bang hypothesis is incorrect. It was published by the Institution of Art and Ideas, which is not a recognized scientific institution anywhere in the world. Eric Lerner, the article's author, has persistently questioned the Big Bang theory since the 1980s, preferring his own questionable views. He quoted Kirkpatrick's statements out of context, prompting others to contact her and inquire if she endorses pseudoscientific fake news. Alison Kirkpatrick was out to correct the impression that James Webb confirmed the Big Bang idea. To do this, she explains why the galaxies in the James Webb photographs are considerably more primitive than current galaxies, and they totally support the Big Bang hypothesis in this area. Her astonishment stems from the fact that they were thought to be much smaller and more straightforward. According to astronomers, they should still originate from different clouds of gas in which star formation processes are only starting, and James Webb's findings indicate completely organized, though remote and primitive, star systems. According to most scientists, this does not confirm the Big Bang theory's inaccuracy. After all, there are several more confirmations, ranging from the microwave backdrop to the red shift. The evidence for the Big Bang is often thought to be based on two facts. First, that more distant galaxies have greater redshift than nearby ones, and second, that the universe is filled with a cosmic background of microwave radiation. The first implies that the cosmos is expanding in all directions, while the second means that it was once scorching and dense. The relative quantity of elements in the early cosmos is the third of the three pillars of evidence supporting the Big Bang. Scientists now realize that there were several phenomena in the early universe soon after the Big Bang that they had not previously considered. This is the distinction between science and pseudoscience. Scientists believe all data, therefore substantial scientific hypotheses are rarely entirely dismissed but are often explained and augmented. And folks like Eric Lerner provide spectacular theories about every unintelligible fact without considering how it relates to what they claimed before. So it is vital to note that the Big Bang is not extinct. Despite common belief, recent James Webb Space Telescope observations have not disproven the Big Bang theory. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If yes, we're sure you would like this next video here. Thanks for watching.